So I'm going to go over how to pull codes using two different methods here. One is the traditional jumper, which will get your check engine light to blink. And the other is using the Innova 3145 code reader. And this reader is pretty cheap. It's about 30 bucks. Um, plus, actually here I have the optional extension harness. This allows you to pull your codes while in the driver's seat. It's not necessarily needed, but it does make things handy. It does come with a pretty good instruction manual. That if you read through it, it shows you how to do the different methods, but I'm going to go through it anyway. There are four different, well, five really different tests that you can do. You can do the key on engine off, then you'll do continuous memory codes, then you'll do key on engine running codes, and then there are two other additional tests. One is called the wiggle test, and another is called the cylinder balance test. So I'm going to go over all of those. I'm going to do it using both showing how to set up with the jumper and showing how to do it with the code reader. Now for the 86 to 88 guys, you do not have a functional check engine light. The check engine light might come on when you turn the key to crank, um, but that's because it's a bulb check feature. But your check engine light is not functional from the factory. Now in the description, I have a link to a thread that I made showing how to make it active on the 87 and 88 cars. The 86 car is a little bit harder to do, but it's still doable. It's all in that thread. So if you have one of those cars, uh, mass air or speed density, and you want to get the check engine light working, please look at that link in the description below. Um, but I will go ahead and start to do the code reading process. First, I'll show you how to set it up using the jumper, and then I will actually read the codes using this code reader. I really recommend everyone get uh, this code reader because it really makes it so much easier. You get numbers to look at, you don't have to count blinks. Um, so it's just a better setup overall. Number one thing to point out, this code reader does require batteries. So make sure that you do install them when you go to use it. All right, so step one is to locate your test plug under your hood. Now on Fox Body Mustangs, the plug is located in this corner. Uh, you, on stock cars, you may actually find it clipped in this area here. My wiring has been redone, so this is where mine is. Now you'll notice there are one, two, three, four connections in this plug, so they're not all being used. In order to trigger the code reading pro, uh, process, you're going to run a jumper from this plug here, which is the, called the STI, to this top pin right here. You can see one is empty. You're going to go from here to this one. Now for you 86 to 88 guys that are using a test light or a multimeter, you're going to run a wire from this port here, which is pin number four, to the positive on the uh, battery. This is a grounding port here. So as this opens and closes with the test light, this will actually blink your codes or your check engine light. So for those of you without a check engine light, jumper from that pin to the positive on the battery with a light or a multimeter. Uh, but to initiate the test, we're going to go from here to there, and I'll show you how that's set up in a second. All right, so this is kind of showing you what's been done. This is all you really need to do. You can use a paper clip, uh, just as long as you make sure it doesn't touch or ground out on the body. Um, but let me get inside the car, and I'll show you how this displays the codes. And then I will proceed actually using the code reader, because at this point, the check engine light is going to blink. So I'm going to do the code reader and the check engine light blinking uh, side by side. Okay, we're in the car. I have the jumper in place. To begin the process, we're simply going to turn the key to on. And we're going to wait for the check engine light to start blinking. Now, normally you would just count your blinks. Now, the reason I like the code reader better is that it gets confusing at times. And sometimes you lose track of your blink, so you may miss a code. So I'm going to stop here. Um, I just wanted to show you how to initiate the count using the jumper. But I'm going to swap this out for the code reader and hold it in this shot here so you can actually see how the code reader and the blinking check engine light work together and why the code reader I think is easier. So let me set that up and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I've installed the code reader and it's as easy as simply plugging it in. Uh, you can see the extension cable allows you to run it from that area to the driver's seat so you can do everything inside. So to begin, turn the key to on. In this case, we're going to turn the code reader on and we'll initiate by running the test button. Now you might have heard some of the solenoids under the hood click. 
that means the process is beginning. So now while you can count the check engine light blinks here, um, you can actually just sit and wait and I'll allow you to do this to see what the code reader displays. So in this case, the first code is 87, and then it's just simply going to proceed on. I'm going to let this run for just a minute and show you how it runs through the process. It typically repeats the codes twice um, prior to moving on to the continuous memory codes. You'll usually get a separator code, which is a 10. So in this case, it looked like 87 repeated twice, and those were the only codes that it read. So now this is a single blink. That's a code 10. So one blink check engine light is just separated code 10. That repeats twice. Sorry, that repeats once. And then we have a code 11 for the continuous memory codes. That's what's being read now. So the first series of codes is your key on engine off codes. And then your second series of codes will be your continuous memory codes. And those are separated by the 10. So continuous memory codes um, are typically what is stored. Now in this case, I have the battery disconnected and I haven't run the car, so there was nothing stored in the memory. So what it's seeing by reading the key on engine off codes is that a code 87, and I don't know what that is off the top of my head right now, is being generated at the moment. But the continuous memory code, since the car hasn't been driven at all, is going to display a code 11, meaning nothing has been stored, no faults. Now at any time you wanted to erase the codes while the, code, the check engine light is blinking, you pull the jumper out or you hit the test button again here or shut it off and that will erase the codes from memory. So that's a, that's a way of deleting the codes without having to unplug the battery and losing all your uh, idle settings and such. So one of the tests that not many folks know about that can be done is what's called the wiggle test. So after your key on, engine off, and your continuous memory codes are run, you can perform the test by simply depressing the accelerator pedal to the floor fully. This will energize all of your solenoids under the hood. For instance, the EVAP purge solenoid, the two thermactor solenoids for the smog pump, if they're not deleted, and some other various solenoids here. I don't have a full list, but if you were to be looking for a loose connection or something, this would be the test that you would do. This is why not many know about it, because it's not really a useful test, and, and considering so many folks delete those solenoids, um, there's not a whole lot that are going to be looking to troubleshoot them. But anyway, Simply depressing the pedal to the floor, you'll hear a click and you'll see that the check engine light will be lit up. Watch. So the check engine light is now on. All the solenoids are energized. You can troubleshoot them. And if you want to turn it off, simply just repeat. And it's off. All the solenoids would be de-energized. This test needs to be done after running your check en uh, the, the engine off and the continuous memory codes, but before you start the engine to run the engine running codes. So now we're ready to run the key on engine running codes. Now, when using the jumper, you would normally just run through your standard code reading procedure and then start your engine. That'll initiate the key on engine running codes. But the code reader, you can actually start that as a first test without even needing to run through the key on engine off codes. So I'll show you here. Now, I had my battery disconnected. Um, I had just hooked it up to do this. So the engine may run a little odd because this is a first start. So I'm going to let it settle down and then I'll show you how I run the code. Now, another thing to note that if you have a manual transmission, you want to make sure you're in neutral and you also want to make sure that your AC is off. Now, for those of you that have a T5 swap in a former AOD car, you may not have your neutral gear switch on top of the T5 connected. You're going to get a code 67. The way around that is to simply keep your clutch pedal pushed in the entire time you're doing the test or jumper that switch out permanently. Um, the, the neutral gear switch is, works in parallel with the clutch switch to help let the ECO. It's not a neutral safety. It lets the ECU know that you're in neutral specifically for running this test, as well as helping somewhat with idle strategy. But anyway, I'm going to start the engine and initiate the test. Running a little rough. There we go. So not bad for a first start. So we're going to turn the code reader on. And we're going to hit the test button. So initially, you'll know right off the way if you get four blinks. Four blinks indicate an eight-cylinder engine, and you can see that's what's displayed there. So you, you can ignore that if you are doing 
The jumper method, if you see four separate blinks, that's just telling you each cylinder. In this case, the engine has idled up, and it'll do so for about a minute or two, in which the idle will drop down to a thousand, and then you'll start reading the codes. Now, the car is cold, so I expect to get a code 21, uh, but we'll just wait a moment here and see what we actually get for codes. So it's about a minute or two later, and it's going to begin reading the codes right now. So as expected, my first code was a 21, uh, simply because my engine coolant temperature is just coming up. So I'm going to let these cycle through until the end, and then I'll show you how to initiate a cylinder balance test. Alright, so I'm letting these codes wrap up. Now, to begin your cylinder balance test, when the codes are done, you're simply going to blip the throttle uh, maybe 50%, and that'll begin your cylinder balance test. But you want to make sure that the check engine light and the code reading process is done. The engine will idle up to about 1500 RPM, and it'll deactivate one cylinder at a time. So I believe that is it. So I'm going to blip the throttle. And as you can see, it's holding up and it'll begin my cylinder balance test. It'll deactivate one cylinder at a time by turning off one injector. Now this process might take five minutes or so, so be patient. So while this is running, you might be able to hear it. The engine is going to slightly go up and down in pitch. You can hear it's a little higher and listen for it to drop when it takes out one cylinder. Right there, the tone changed a little bit, so that's what's running for the test. It's turning off one injector at a time, so you're essentially running on seven cylinders. So here that, that cylinder was turned back on and the engine now returns to normal. It's going to do this eight times. And when it's done, it'll return to idle, and it'll blink off the cylinder if you have a problem. If it's all set, it'll blink nine times, which you can see it's doing, and you'll get a code 90, which means all cylinders are good. Now, if you have a problem, you'll actually get a 10 to 80 or a 1 to 8. That'll indicate your cylinder, your problem cylinder. So if you had a problem with cylinder 4, you would get four blinks. I'll shut it off here because we don't need to do this anymore. And to stop the process, you just turn your ignition off, hit the off button, etc. cetera. Uh, but anyway, as you're running through that process, if it were to blink four times or give you the code 40, that would tell you you have a problem on cylinder number four. So this is a useful test um, to determine if you get one cylinder that's not firing. Now, either, it either can be spark, compression, or, or the, um, the fuel from the injector. But the way that the test works is that it, it shuts off one injector, so it kills, fu it kills fuel completely to that cylinder. And by doing that, it measures a drop in the RPM, which you can clearly see that it's, it's going up and down, uh, indicating that the cylinder is being deactivated. So anyway, this was a quick overview of reading codes. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Thank you very much.